What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Money Moves with Kay. I'm Kay, and today we're gonna to talk about five things I personally did in order to get instant bookings with travel nurses with our midterm rental. If that's something that you're interested in, please stay tuned for the video. So it's no secret that travel nurses are the absolute best tenants when it comes to occupying your midterm rental. In fact, what they do is they come home from a hard day's work, they eat, relax, go to sleep, and do it all over again the next day. So there's no parties, there's no fuss, there's no issues really. And that's what we wanted. So we constructed, which is what I'm in right now, we constructed a new home and attached to that home is a guest house. And within that guest house is a one bedroom, one bath property. It has a washer and dryer, a full kitchen, all the amenities that a travel nurse or any uh, traveling professional would need in order to maintain themselves for a couple of months, okay? So this enables us to provide lodging for travel nurses, but also to live free, right? So that 500 square foot guest house uh, pays for the entire mortgage for our property. So that was a way for us to house hack and also essentially live for free. So this list will enable you to understand how we were able to secure one year's worth of renters in our midterm rental for our guest house, okay? And without further ado, I kind of go ahead and start. The very first thing you want to ensure is that you prepare your um, property for launch day. So you want to make sure that launch day is marketed very, very well in order for it to be a success and hit the ground running. So months before we even finished constructing the guest house and our actual property, we were able to get a logo for the property. Uh, we put that logo on everything. We put the logo on the mats, uh, water bottles, uh, business cards, and I'm going to get to the business cards a little later. A lot of you folks might say business cards are outdated and I'm going to get to that. That's a great tip that I'll get to later on in the video about how business cards are very much such an asset that you can um, tangibly drop off to businesses and offices around your local area and they can have, and I'll get to the details about that a little later. But yes, what we did is we try to position ourselves as a brand to look very professional uh, because launching your, um, your midterm rental is very, very important as far as visually. Is it aesthetically pleasing? And also, um, does it what type of feeling does it bring? Is it warm? Is it comfortable? Those are all key things when you're trying to target the travel nurses. And by the way, my mom is a travel nurse, so I got all these tips from her, right? So shout out to you, mom. She is a travel nurse and she gave me the ins and outs about what to put in the property, what not to put in the property, and to how and how to make it um, more accommodating for those folks who are traveling and really just want a restful, peaceful night's uh, rest and, and, and comfort. In addition to making the logo, you want to join Facebook groups that are geared towards travel nurses. You also want to check out Indeed. Now, this is a hack I'm sharing with you for free, free 99, all right? So what you do is you go on Indeed. Now, Indeed will be hiring folks in the area. And there are other platforms that hire travel nurses within your local area, but I'm going to just use Indeed because that's literally what I, I use. Um, so what you do is you go on Indeed and you put in travel nurse and try to figure out um, what these companies are. So your main mission is to figure out what is the company name, right? So that you can contact somebody specific. I'll get to that in a second. So you can contact them and get more information, but more importantly, to build a rapport. So what I did was put in travel nurse um, into the search engine and a uh, boom, a ton of companies popped out. Now, like I mentioned earlier, my mom is a travel nurse. So she gave me a lot of the companies that she's worked for with her recruiter and also just in the area that I wanted to reach out to. But this was a good way to reach out to folks that were not inside of my network, meaning uh, they could be in Buffalo, New York or South Carolina, wherever. These companies are located everywhere that hire these travel nurses. So um, you're going to be uh, focused on reaching out to the housing manager or the housing specialist. And these folks are not easy to track down or get their email address. So, uh, yeah, it's very, very easy to go on LinkedIn and try to find out their email address. But for me, I have a background in wholesaling. So what I did was pretty much I um, contacted them. I also went a little deeper. I found out their interests and everything because at the end of the day, we're human beings, right? So I wanted to build a solid rapport with these folks even before my property was decorated and really before it was even finished. So it's very, very important when you get their email to reach out to them, have, be prepared, have um, everything they need in order to put your listing into a, uh, a database within their company. Now, before we continue, I really wanted to talk about a company I've been working with for the past couple months called Avail. Now, Avail is a landlord platform that allows you and I to landlord a lot easier. So what you can do with Avail is you can let rent. 
uh, from your tenants. You can screen your tenants with a background check or credit checks and also look at the eviction notices within a tenant's pass. You can also um, draft and sign leases electronically, which is a mind blowing thing and a game changer. All right. And one of the things I really like about um, the lease portion of Avail, the best is that they already come with ready made leases for you and they're state specific. So there may be state specific clauses that you would need to add to a, a lease and they have it right there for you. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. Give Avail a try. Click the link in the description and I'll go ahead and sign up for Avail. I've been using it for the past couple months, so it is officially K approved and uh, back to the video. So the things you're going to add when you send them an email is the price of the property, um, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, where is it located, uh, do you allow pets, do you not allow pets. These are very, very important things for these housing managers or housing specialists because at the end of the day, um, they can go on Airbnb, they can go on Furnish Finder. In fact, I found a lot of these folks on Furnish Finder as well, but it would be a lot easier if they could just go to their internal database and say, hey, Kay has a property in such and such area. I can just go directly to her and see if it's available. And um, I reached out to a ton of people. And mind you, during this process, you're going to get a lot of uh, no feedback or a lot of no's or no thank you or we don't do that. But that's OK. Keep going. Wholesaling has taught me to send things out to about 100 people, right, if I can. 100 people. I can guarantee that I can get at least one or two. And in this situation, it's not that deep, right? It's not selling a home, but um, I can get at least some responses back so that I can go ahead and just build a rapport. And earlier, I mentioned that I really try to understand the people, their behavior and their personality and what they like. I found out that one of the housing managers that I was contacting um, really loved baseball. How did I find that out? Through my research, my adequate research, right? So I found out that he really loves baseball. Now, if I really wanted to build an even deeper connection or rapport with that recruiter or not recruiter, but uh, that housing manager, I could send him a baseball mug or whatever the case may be, or mention that in, in conversation, whether we speak uh, verbally or through email. So it's just really important to know who you're talking to, to build a solid rapport. And a part of that is just understanding their interests and getting to know them as a human being and uh, going from there. They'll be highly likely to, to give you those listings that they may not give anybody else just because they feel like they know you. And it's not fake. It's really, you're trying to get to know them so we could build a uh, mutual uh, understanding and a mutual beneficial working relationship. You can also send emails to local recruiters in the area, right? So these recruiters are looking for travel nurses. So what I did was I contacted the HR department for the VA. So again, backstory real quick, we're a military family, husband uh, served 20 years in the army, and he retired. So we're located in an area that has at least two VAs, right? Um, so folks that are coming into the area that are travel nurses or working professionals in the area, they don't always have to be travel nurses, by the way. I'll get to that. Um, folks that are coming into this area that are working for the VA, as an example, um, you know, I can contact the HR department and say, hey, recruiter, I have a property. It's ready to go. It's it's or it's not ready to go because at that time it wasn't ready, but it will be ready at set date, right? So if it's a month down the line, two days, 10 days, whatever the case may be, give them a proposed date that you are ready to go and it's showtime. So um, those that's a great tip too, to contact HR uh, for these particular um, uh, recruiting companies or a hospital. So I've also contacted the hospital in my local area, hospitals in my local area, roughly 30 minutes out because 30 minutes out basically means that that is kind of from my feedback from my mom and also other travel nurses they don't want to drive in traffic, number one. Who does? And also, number two, they want to ensure that they're within 30 minutes-ish uh, from their the place of work uh, because they don't want a long, long commute. So if, if you can, try to reach out to hospitals or local, um, air, local places that are about 30 minutes away from um, your property. All right, the next thing you want to do is make sure that you price competitively. I cannot tell you how many times I came into this like, yeah, I'm about to make $5,000 per month. And no, <laughs> no travel nurse. I, I doubt anybody would pay that much unless it's a super amazing uh, midterm rental or just a super amazing place and good for you. But every person that comes into this situation, mainly, um, even though I know my numbers, right? I just came in thinking like, yeah, I'll get way more. I had no reviews. I had nothing to, to stand on, but I expected much more as far as the price that I was willing to get. Um, in the beginning. So just make sure that you price competitively. Look at your competition. If you're on Furnish Finder, look at what your local, like for one bedroom, one bath or two bedroom, two bath, whatever it is, 
apples to apples, oranges, oranges to oranges. Make sure you you price competitive, competitively with them because at the end of the day, you're competing with them. So look at what they're offering. See how you can jazz your, your place up a little bit more to offer something different or better, okay? Because like I look at it as a competitor, also travel nurses are competing. They have a favorites list on Furnish Finder to say, these are my favorites. And, um, you know, they'll choose wisely from that list. But make sure you price competitively, okay? And also... With Furnish Finder, as an example, when nurses send in um, a request for housing, they also say, you know, I'm willing to pay this between $1,600 $1, and $2,000. I am willing to pay that, nothing more, nothing less. So look at that. And I was starting to see a trend in what they were willing to pay for a bedroom, for instance, right? And if you have uh, a bigger home, you can rent out each bedroom. And that's another video, another time. But for this, just make sure you price competitively and uh, just look at your competition. And next on the list is to that point, make sure your listing stands out. All right, so you have to make sure that your listing stands out. So you got to keep in mind that travel nurses are in the area or will be staying at your listing for three to four months. So within that three to four months, what would I need is what I thought about. Like I would need a washer and dryer. Boom, got that check. I would need, you know, a kitchen because I would like to cook. I don't want to eat out all the time. I would need a foam mattress. Check. Got that. I would need blackout curtains, right? If I am working tirelessly all day, I want a place that's relaxing and that doesn't have much sunlight coming into my window so I can sleep, okay? Uh, I would want a coffee station. Um, a lot of folks, a lot of travel nurses or a lot of uh, medical professionals or people in general love coffee, right? So that's, that's no surprise that you would have a coffee station. These are things at bare minimum that are really, really cool to have in your listing. I've personally found thus far that an outdoor space is cool. It's cool to have, but it's really not even that important. So if you don't have an outdoor space in your property, don't feel bad because we don't necessarily have it. It's rarely any grass growing, <laughs> still some hay and uh, dirt down because again, it's a new, newly constructed property. So, um, because at the end of the day, they are coming to your property to rest. They want peace. They want quiet. They are not about having a party outside or grilling out outside. They may want to do that, but, um, it's not like top notch priority for them. They really are just about comfortability and just trying to make sure that they are, uh, at peace and quiet. That's really it. So that's why they are my favorite, um, tenants thus far because no issues, no fuss, and uh, they're about that business, and so are we. So we try to provide, as hosts, the best enjoyable possible um, or the best uh, experience for them. But again, make your list and stand out. It's very, very important. Make Look at your furniture. Have quality furniture. Um, so all these things are really great to just, you know, try something different. Also, again, to the point of what I made earlier, look at your competition. If they don't offer something, try to offer it and highlight that in your uh, description for your property. So... These are all great ways to just try to make your listing stand out. Next on the list is pay attention to your listing description because you want to be as transparent as possible. So list everything in the description. It's also important here to make sure you have lots and lots and lots and lots of pictures, at least uh, 45 to 50 pictures, because the point here is that you're trying to answer your guest questions visually. So they need to see, okay, how is the wall set up? Or uh, how is the computer desk set up? Or, or what does the uh, front door look like? Whatever you think may not need to be photographed probably does, okay? And more importantly, you shouldn't do it if you're not a photographer. You should always try to hire a professional photographer that does that for a living. That is their jam, right? Ins and outs, they got it. They got the angles, they got the lighting, boom. Don't have to worry about it. I would prefer to fork out that money for that upfront, right? This is an upfront cost to you, a photographer, in order to reap the benefits of constant bookings or long lasting bookings over the year or more. So Keep that in mind. Make sure you have plenty and plenty, plenty of pictures because that will be very important uh, when people are trying to visually answer some of their questions. Next on the list is add your listing to multiple platforms. As for me, I added to Airbnb and Furnish Finder. These two are the best for me. Of course, there are other platforms, VRBO, et cetera. But for me and how I've done it thus far, these two are very, very um, best as far as capitalizing the amount of eyeballs on your listing, okay? So ensure that you have your listing on multiple platforms. I personally prefer Airbnb and Furnish Finder. And a good tip here is to make sure you don't double book and to mark your calendars on each platform that you use. There are processes and actual platforms that do that for you. But for Furnish Finder and Airbnb, I haven't found one. And if you have, please put it in the comments. 
I haven't found one that would say, okay, I have a booking or Airbnb. I need to market off a of furnished finder and vice versa. So keep that in mind as you go through your journey with uh, these multiple platforms to have processes and mechanisms in place so, so that you stay organized as much as possible because that is very, very key. And uh, this whole hosting thing that we're really getting accustomed to and used to. So yes, make sure you organize in that manner. That's the end of my video. Thank you so, so very much for making it to this point. Of course, I got a keyword for you to put in the comment section if you made it to this point, because I truly appreciate you. It allows me to know that you made it to this point. So down in the comment section, could you write midterm? Okay. Just write midterm. That'll allow me to know, yeah, I made it to this point in the video. Okay. I got you. And I appreciate you. Of course, until next time, guys, you stay super blessed. Peace.